Welcome to the fifth installation of the President's Awards for the Innovation and Service Excellence, or as we fondly call it, Praise for the Public Sector, hosted by the Inter-American Development Bank under the kind patronage of Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, ORTT, the President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, these prestigious awards seek to recognize the public sector for the industrious work they are going to bring innovation and excellent service uh, delivery to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago and at large. This evening, we have five finalists in both uh, the service excellence category and the innovation category. Now, an open call for all applicants began in August 2022. There were a total of 14 applicants on the service excellent category and 15 applications in the innovation category. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe it is already an achievement to be listed as a finalist for these awards. And on that basis, we will now present certificates of recognition to our finalists. We now invite Judge Alison DeMass and Judge George Leacock to assist us on stage. Now we start with the innovation category. We want to say congratulations to the Ministry of Sport and Community Development, PES, the Pink Rain Campaign, Girls Run TT. Congratulations. The Girls Run TT Challenge is a pillar in the Ministry of Sport and Community Development's Pink Rain Campaign that seeks to encourage women and girls to be physically active and increase their involvement and participation in sport. Via an open call registration to the public, our aim was to target 120 women and girls to register. But the response was so overwhelming that we decided to sponsor 300 of them. The participants would receive a waived entry fee to partake in the virtual challenge and a pink rain t-shirt. And upon completing the mileage, they would receive a unique seven piece medal that clicks together, celebrating the Magnificent Seven forming the island of Trinidad. Girls Run TT Challenge's aim is to increase the involvement and enrich the lives of citizens through total participation, quality training, and excellence in sport. In the innovation category, we want to say congratulations to the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, first virtual crop farming website, Congratulations. And so the ministry was caught in a little quandary. How could we have made that, the plastic material that we have available to the members of the public in such a way that it was safe? It was safe for the consumers to access it so there wouldn't be minimal crowding and it's safe for our staff as well. And so the concept of the Fritch virtual website, which we now call the Grotrin Bega website was born. And why should you access it? It showcases the planting material available at the different stations of the Ministry of Agriculture. And the Ministry sells planting material at a subsidized cost. So the website gives you information such as, how do I grow this commodity? What weather alerts do I need to be aware of? Soil fertility. So we want it to be a one-stop shop for anyone who's dealing in agriculture in Trinidad and Tobago. With this project, food security or increasing food security can become a real reality in Trinidad and Tobago. Up next, we'd like to welcome the Ministry of Works and Transport Licensing Division Mobile Office. Job well done. I am happy to share with you some insight into our new project, the Licensing Mobile Office. Which the Licensing Mobile Office is a state-of-the-art, fully equipped roving unit with the necessary ICT equipment and technology such as computers, cameras, switches and firewalls to provide secure access to centralized licensing information while on the move. With the necessary consumables, members of the general public can conduct transactions such as a renewal of a driver's permit, obtaining a certified copy on the same day, change of vehicle color and engine just to mention a few 
without having to visit an actual licensing office. This new service allows us to go to the people. To date, I am proud to state that we have served more than 9,000 customers in over 14 communities with over 15,000 hassle-free transactions completed. The Mobile Licensing Office is yet another example of how we are continuing to create a paradigm shift in the public sector to provide offerings that are convenient, fast and secure. Next, we welcome the National Energy Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago Limited the installation of a 100 kilowatt solar PV rooftop system. Congratulations. This project is a renewable energy based project. We were given a mandate by the government to implement a project at a new service station, which is built in Prisal. This is perhaps one of the largest service stations that you'll see in the Caribbean and we were entrusted to design, procure, install, test and commission a 100 kilowatt solar photovoltaic PV system for that gas station. So the station essentially is powered by solar energy. In particular, the, there are two electric vehicle chargers. There is also the convenience store lighting, the periphery and perimeter lighting, as well as the liquid fuel pump dispensers. They are all powered by the solar PV system. I think that we are in a good position to win this award because this is not only a new, but it's an innovative and creative project. And it's the first of its kind in Trinidad and Tobago, and also the largest service station that is powered by renewable energy, and in particular, solar power, perhaps in the Caribbean. Next on stage, we welcome the Trinidad and Tobago Securities and Exchange Commission's Investor Protection App. So the TTSEC's Investor Protection App was launched in August 2021. So investment fraud is a really big issue in Trinidad and Tobago, and there are a number of persons being targeted online and via messaging apps with get-rich-quick scams. And we needed a mechanism whereby we can reach persons and have them report these scams immediately so that we can take action. The TTSEC's Investor Protection App provides a solution against investment scams. Now, persons can easily submit their complaint or report a scam to us via email, messaging, via images, documents, and so forth, and provides an easy and convenient way to reach the TTSEC. And they can do this 24 seven from the palm of their hands. In the Service Excellence category, we say congratulations to MIC Institute of Technology Limited, MIC IT, rediscovering TVET. Congratulations. As an institution, we feel that we can transform any person to learn a skill and take their place in society. Our project is about uh, rediscovering TVET. TVET is the acronym for Technical Vocational Education and Training. The challenge that we had during COVID is what sparked some of the initiatives that we embarked on with digitalization of TVET. The project looked at online changing our learning management system to a blended learning system. Blended learning is really having some portion of the training online and some face-to-face. -face. And so we had to embark on teaching our uh, instructors how to teach online. And we also had to teach our trainees how to participate in a class in an online environment. And so we, we are seeing a, a thriving business being developed at MIC Institute of Technology in support of youth development. And it all augurs well in terms of what the government is trying to achieve in terms of youth development. And so we feel that we are playing our part as an institution towards that development. Next, we welcome Nihus. Teach me.
The project is called Teach Me, which is an abbreviation for increasing teachers' confidence for my education. Essentially, the project aims to contribute to increasing the levels of creativity in Trinidad and Tobago by strengthening the areas of science, technology, and education, specifically science education, as an enabler to allow the youth to have a better chance in the dynamic future ahead. We will achieve this objective through project activities, namely the Teachers Virtual Curriculum Competition, the National Students Innovation Competition, STEM Clubs, STEM Camps, and STEM Professionals Career Day. Nehe should win the Praise Awards because of our success in bridging that divide, that digital divide that the pandemic created our success rates with students and teacher engagement and building and developing those 21st century skills to better prepare students for work life and their future. Next we have TTT Limited, see yourself. Congratulations TTT Limited. So we realized that during the COVID-19 pandemic, people were very, very isolated. And we wanted to find a way to find that positive spark, to bring that positive spark back into the population. And so that's how the CSL program was born. We wanted to find a way to focus on what communities are doing, what NGOs are doing, what the average citizen is doing. We wanted people to see themselves in these stories that we tell. And so we wanted to also provide that transformation. And so that is how we created CSL, as a way for people to see themselves on the TV, as a way to get the information out there, because there's so many amazing projects in the country, but how are we going to get the information out there and see yourself is also that conduit when we put that information out there how are state agencies going to get involved in the lives of the, these people and help them and so that is what see yourself can also do create that conduit between what the communities are doing and how the state agencies can get involved next we welcome the export import bank of trinidad and tobago limited exim bank forex 3.0 congratulations in 2018, the Ministry of Finance set up the Manufacturing Forex Facility to help manufacturers achieve their growth potential. By providing foreign exchange for raw materials, plant and machinery, what we're doing is increasing the productivity and competitiveness of our manufacturers. And this is allowing them to export more and bring back more foreign exchange into Trinidad and Tobago. Then at the start of the pandemic, we had the, the foreign exchange for essential items and really that was to prevent shortages of key essential items in the country. We got through the pandemic without major shortages and this foreign exchange facility, for the essentials foreign exchange facility, helped by us addressing supply chain bottlenecks. We were able to get cash to foreign suppliers who would not accept credit at that time. And this is what kept the smooth flow of essentials into the country. So at the Manufacturing for Forex facility, we are actually seeing the results and exports are growing significantly. So we know our efforts are actually having national impact. And next we welcome the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Special Victims Department. Congratulations. Oh yes. So our project is the Special Victims Department which was launched by the Commissioner of Police and the Executive of the TTPS in January of 2021. This department amalgamated the Child Protection Unit, which was already in existence in 2015 within the TTPS, as well as the Gender-Based Violence Unit, which was launched in 2020, and the Sexual Offenses Unit. Now, the amalgamation of these units created a unit within the TTPS where persons could feel comfortable to come forward and make reports. These officers, before the formation of the unit, they were highly trained in trauma training, so they are well equipped and aware and ready and awaiting survivors to come forward and make their reports and create that safe place for children, women, and even men to come forward and report gender-based violence. Welcome on stage, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks, ORTT, the President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, to bring the feature remarks this evening. In their pursuit of excellence, the finalists were able to identify gaps and deficiencies in their respective areas of endeavor, create 
inventive solutions, and deliver new and effective outcomes to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Some were beset by resource and other circumstantial limitations, but persevered in order to bring their plans to fruition. The public servant, servants who conceptualized and executed these measures are thankfully not among those who mask incompetence or laziness behind the unfortunate attitude of that's how we always do it, or that good enough, where's all this fuss? No, these workhorses belong to a tribe that pursues distinction and leaves no stone unturned in delivering their mandate. Their efforts to enhance, and in some cases reinvent service delivery, are praiseworthy. And even though there can only be one winner per category, all entries were of high caliber. In the service excellence category, there was a discernible trend towards making government services easier to access and eliminating barriers which can frustrate citizens in their attempts to do business with the state. Not to be outdone, those in the innovation stream had a similar approach, ensuring that customers had more and more diverse options in their interactions with the public sector. The presentations highlighted the importance of maintaining and improving the bridge between the state tasked to provide necessary services and the people entitled to expect them. Entrance understood the assignment that citizens should be able to access opportunities, resources and services easily and consistently in order to enjoy a better quality of life. It was abundantly clear that we only need to give eager public servants sufficient support encouragement and leeway to bring about the innovation and development that the public sector and by extension the nation so desperately needs. Thank you. Now, friends, at this juncture, we will announce the main winners of the President's Awards for Innovation and Service Excellence. These awards were selected by a distinguished panel of judges and chaired by Her Excellency Paula May Weeks. We now invite Ms. Karina Coburn, head of the IDBTT, to join Her Excellency on stage. And friends, the winner of the, in the innovation category is Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries for their crop farming website. Congratulations to the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. This is Dr. Titus, friends. I think you should give her a round of applause. Job well done. And now, Dr. Titus, in terms of the Ministry of Land, Agriculture, and Fisheries, which you represent, winner of the innovation category, how do you feel about winning the award? Well, I think needless to say, um, on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture, we're very pleased, we're very happy about it. But very importantly also, we're heartened that there is an avenue that allows us to showcase the great work that's done, done by the ministry and allows it to be recognized. Excellent. And uh, in terms of what words of encouragement do you have for persons seeking to take a new pro approach to their work, especially, of course, in the public sector? I will encourage them. Um, I would just say probably three things. Number one, identify the need. Uh, two, come up with a, a solution that's sustainable and pull an excellent team of persons together and persevere to get it done. Because it's good for the ministry, it's good for the nation, and it can be recognized with praise awards. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Titus. Thank you very much. And next, we announce the winner in the service excellence category. We want to say big congratulations to MIC TVET Rediscovering Skills. Congratulations, MIC. From your way. Tell me something in terms of the award. I want to ask the same question I just asked Dr. Titus. How does it feel to, you know, winning the award? It feels great. Um, on behalf of uh, MIC Institute of Technology, we are deeply honored to receive such a prestigious award. And, and I, I can see, I can see the, 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 
the, the, the, the pride in your face. Yes, man. <laughs> now, tell us what, what words of encouragement would you have for those in the public sector who are on the front lines providing services directly to the public who sometimes can be, you know, a little harsh? Right. Uh, I think uh, I can refer to our project itself, uh, where we use the technology to reach out to our trainees uh, who, who were at home during the pandemic. And so we use technology to create an online platform to continue the training while they're at home. And so I would say to the public servants, uh, try to use more technology in their day-to-day -day work. It can help and, and improve efficiency in the, in the services that you offer. And, and it will also make sure that no one is left behind. Very much so. Correct is right. Thank you very much and congratulations to you and your team. Now that the IDB Friends has been working with the President's Office on these awards for the last five years, I want to welcome again to the stage Ms. Karina Coburn, the head of the IDB Country Office of Trinidad and Tobago, to give some more insights on the work of the IDB and why these awards are so important. Now, Karina, tell me something in terms of um, the awards. Can you tell us what the Inter-American Development Bank does in Trinidad and Tobago? In terms of what the bank does in Trinidad and Tobago, we are engaged in financing development projects in the public and private sectors. We provide long-term financing, we provide grant financing, we provide expertise. And we have been in Trinidad and Tobago for over 50 years. At the moment, our specific focus is on digital transformation, which I think is a priority for all stakeholders in the country at this time. So I can't come to the bank and open an account tomorrow? I... No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, no car loans, no mortgages. Okay, no problem. <laughs> now, the IDB partnered with the Office of the President to host praise for the, you know, first time five years ago. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit more about this partnership and what the awards are actually trying to achieve in the public service? Sure. Well, first of all, let me say that the, the awards recognize the efforts of existing public servants who are already doing very innovative things or doing things in new ways and seeking to serve their clients, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, better. So it recognizes existing efforts, but another aspect of it is to encourage and promote new initiatives and, and really inspire other other um, public public officials and officers to do similar things yeah. and come out and win these awards. One thing I want to tell you about it is that the awards aren't cash awards. There's no financial compensation. When we first started to think about it, there was a debate about whether we should offer a financial prize. And we said, no, this has to be coming from the heart. It has to be about um, development and we're going to do a, a trophy and we're going to seek a, a patron who is of the highest order in the land. And of course, we approached President Paula May Weeks and she agreed immediately to do it. And what you may have heard from her is that she is personally engaged and involved in the selection of these winners. Yeah, and, and you couldn't get anyone higher than that, right? <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, we're awarding winners in two categories. I mean, we hear this word thrown around all over the place for the last probably 15, 20 years, innovation and service excellence. Why those two categories? Right. So when thinking about this, um, why innovation, for example? As I mentioned, we want to see public servants thinking about new approaches new ways to deliver their, their work program, new ways to serve the citizens of this country. And um, there are change makers out there, there are revolutionary thinkers out there, and we want to recognize their efforts. On the service excellence side, we really see that there are public officials who recognize that the citizens of this country are clients, 
They they want to delight them. They want to make sure that their needs are taken care of. And, and they really see their role as being in government to serve the people. And that's what we want to recognize. Excellent. Now, lastly, in terms of advice, what advice would you give the public offices and the state institutions as they carry out their duties in here in Trinidad and Tobago? I, I have to say, for some of you, keep on doing what you're doing. We know that there are constraints, there are difficulties. It's, it's, it's not always a, a, a job that's well recognized. It can be a thankless task, but keep going, keep innovating, keep trying new things. And from the IDB and the judges and all the people in this room, we want to say that we see you, we acknowledge the work that you're doing and we want you to keep at it. So thank you very much. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, a special part of these awards allow the members of the public to also be judges. Yes. Now, members of the public were given two weeks to engage in online voting to select who they think the winners should be in the innovation and service excellent categories based on the projects presented. Polls actually closed on December 5th, and we are definitely interested in the outcome. So... Of course, Ms. Coburn, you would assist us in presenting the awards. And now with an impressive 18,000, yes, 18,000, 230 votes, the winner of the People's Choice in the Innovation category is the Ministry of Sports and Community Development, Pink Rain. Uh, we, we just wanted to ask in terms of this award, this is the People's Choice Award, uh, when folks heard the amount of votes, they, they were aghast in terms of how many votes you all accumulated. How do you feel about winning this award? I am shocked, to be honest. Uh, we were going up against the Ministry of Agriculture and some others, but we were always neck to neck with agriculture. But I think that the Pink Rain campaign <laughs> is a program that really touched the hearts of women throughout Trinidad and Tobago, women and girls. They came out in their numbers and they ran the 83 miles. This is our third year doing uh, this Girls Run TT and providing a platform for women and girls to participate in sport at all levels. We have a really excellent team in the Ministry of uh, Workers in the uh, Physical Education and Sport Division who go the extra mile to make sure that this initiative is successful. So I'm happy that all of Trinidad and Tobago have been uh, captured and are excited and have embraced, embraced it. And I really want to salute all physical education and sports division headed by Mr. Gabri Mathieu. And we have a really, really solid team. I met them there. They provide the guidance. They do the work. And we just pretty much cheer them on. So tonight, this Awards is about Ministry of Sport and Community Development, PESD, and not CPA. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Minister Kojo, and congratulations. Job pleasure. well done. <laughs> Job well done. Now, friends, we have the People's Choice Award in the service category. Yes. The winner of the People's Choice Awards in the Service Excellence category with 3,015 votes. We want to welcome again to the stage MIC. Congratulations. And I, I understand, friends, this is the very first time that an organization has won both the main award and the People's Choice Award. So this is a first. Congratulations. Again. Tell us how you feel that the public has selected you as the winner in this category. Well, we are really, really elated that the public, you know, would have accepted us, right? We know MIC is no stranger to the public, right? We are basically a household name, although I know some of our um, competitors would say otherwise. Um, but we are a household name, so we are elated of the award. 
Thank you very much. And you all are our household name. Congratulations. Yes. Job well done. <laughs> yes. All right, so friends, I want to say congratulations to all the awardees this evening. We're wrapping up yet another edition of the Praise 2022 Awards, and it was certainly a pleasure being your host this evening. On behalf of the Office of the President and the Inter-American Development Bank, my friends, thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, to give praise to the public sector of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm.